The reason why I'm in Bristol is because on the 21st of June, uh, we're holding an assessment centre on audition day for the top 40 budding young salespeople. I say young, and it can be of all ages, but in terms of young, in terms of experience, we're looking for raw talent. My business is all about raw talent. Uh, we've, um, we're recruiting 10 people. So out of the 40 people that we see um, at the audition day, we're going to put them through apprentice-style tasks. Um, so if that's your bag, if that's your thing, then you should definitely come down to Engineer's House. You need to contact us at Raw Talent Academy forward slash Bristol. Um, in order to, to, to run for my team, we'll pick you up and start talking to you about you know, in, in a little bit more detail and stuff. But we've uh, partnered up with a, an employer of choice in Bristol, which is called uh, Resource Solutions Group, and they are looking at taking on 10 people. So this is not a, um, a competition as such, a fad if you like. This is real life opportunity for, for 10 jobs. And I think it's a fantastic um, opportunity for people that are looking to get into sales, that are looking to build a career. All of the people that are leaving universities at the moment, just gone through their exams, not really knowing what they want to do. Uh, people that may be looking to retrain. Uh, people that think that when they've seen, for example, me on The Apprentice or watching The Current Apprentice thinking I could do that, well this is your chance to kind of come and have a little mini go if you like and get a real job at the end of it. So why did you choose Bristol? And Bristol for me is, uh, was a, today, it's fantastic, it's, it's a lovely, lovely day. Um, it was through networking, to be honest, and through the, the actual employers. I wanted to make sure that the academy is going to be working with an employer of choice, somebody who is going to get the right level of training, the right level of commitment. I think it's really important when people are going into an, a, a new organisation and they don't really, they haven't got that real experience of, of maybe working before or certainly working in that role, they need to have that kind of that guidance and that development and that coaching and Resource Solutions Group actually provide all of that along with my company. So that's why it was kind of a match made in heaven, really. It's quite an unusual approach, isn't it? And especially in this current economic climate, with you know we're getting stories all the time, sadly, that people are being laid off. It's quite an unusual approach to, to attract new staff. Yeah, and it was something that, you know, pre-apprentice, I mean, my, my recruitment experience spans over 11 years. I ran a recruitment or managed a recruitment business for a corporate organisation way before I even went on The Apprentice. It seems like a long, long, long time ago now. Um, but I've been an employer of salespeople for the last kind of seven, eight years myself. And it's been really difficult to find a good balance between experienced salespeople and inexperienced salespeople. Um, salespeople by their own admissions are kind of, uh, you know, they're very confident people, they're outgoing people, and they can talk the talk effectively. But what we're finding over the last uh, kind of eight years or so when I've been employing salespeople was trying to get that balance between experienced people and kind of inexperienced people. Um, we tend to hire based on what people say to us, based on what's written on your CV, based on qualifications. And what I'm trying to do is actually showcase based on their actual ability to put them through the task to assess effectively what they're actually doing. So it gives the client an opportunity to, to see what talent they're actually bringing on board to their organisation. So it really is a version of The Apprentice. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I look at The Apprentice as a as a job interview from hell, for, um, you know, for want of a better word. It's not really real life business as such, but it's a job interview from hell. The, the candidates or the, the opportunity here is a lot for um, for the applicants is to actually go through mini type apprentice tasks. We're going to be running a sales task. We're going to be running a, a advertising task. We're going to be running a business task as well. So it's an opportunity for people that maybe like myself who didn't have a great education to pit their wits against people that maybe have just graduated from university. Now, everybody through the Royal Town Academy is on a level playing field. So it's about, and as you said before, these strong uh, economic times and these issues that we've got with unemployment levels, 16 to 24 year olds, a million of them unemployed, 80 graduates to every one job when people are getting out there. It's about trying to make yourself unique. And what better way to make yourself unique is to actually showcase your skills. So what do you think um, about this year's uh, candidates on The Apprentice? I'm struggling, I'm struggling was, to be honest, with, with this year. I'm, I'm doing a lot of blogs and a lot of reviews and stuff, and no one's really standing out. A couple of weeks ago, I tipped Jim, I thought, and I still think Jim will be in the final, um, but having said that, he had a bad week this week as well. So, you know, I, I'm try, I try and always relate back to my experience, having been through the whole, whole experience and obviously being hired. Um, you do have good days and bad days, don't you? You know, we all do in, in work, and I think you know, I put that down to, to Jim's experience. But no one else really is standing out. I think from uh, Melody and maybe Zoe, 
Um, but again, I'm being quite tentative here because it's really difficult. Last year, I picked I picked the top four um, very quickly. This year, it's really difficult to do. I, I think it really does depend as well um, on what Lord Sugar's uh, looking for. And I've worked for him for two years, so I kind of I'm not going to say I know him. Of course, I don't. You know, know him at the back of my hand. But I worked for him for two years, and I know the type of person that he would look for, and certainly the type of person that he would want to do business with. There's a lot of candidates in there at the moment that are not showing them qualities. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it, you know, once you are hired, what is life like, um, you know, certainly for those two years that you worked in his company? For, for me, uh, was it was amazing. I, I've got to be honest, I, I just I referenced earlier, I worked in a corporate organisation for the best part of eight, nine years or so, learning my trade through recruitment. And, and actually on leave, my business unit turned over £32 million. Pounds. I had a really good job um, and it was a massive risk for me to give that up and actually go through the prints in the first place but I wanted to learn how to I suppose be a true entrepreneur how to set up a business I never had that, that experience before and that's exactly what the apprentice gave me the weird thing about the apprentice is you don't know what job you're going for when you apply you don't really know what job you're going to be going for and for me it, maybe it was luck maybe it was timing uh, but when I won I actually went in as a director level into a brand new company we had no staff we had no um, product we had no service no marketing and along um, with surrounding so Lord Sugar's son Simon Sugar uh, we set up a business called Amscreen and we set it up from scratch so I learned everything how to acquire a company we bought a couple of companies um, I learned how to to, uh, staff the organisation from scratch, how to manufacture the product, sell the product, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And, and now, as we look back two years on, or two and a half years on now, because I, I left um, back in August 2010, um, it's a thriving business. So that gave me the kind of the confidence and the experience that I needed to set up Royal Talent Academy. And is that why you decided to leave, because you thought you want to go on and, and do your own thing now? Yeah, I mean, The Apprentice is a, it's a weird vehicle, like it's a weird animal, really. Everybody that's left working for Lord Sugar has all gone on to set their own companies up. I think it's the nature of the beast, and I think that the, the reason why um, he's decided to maybe change the format for this season is purely for that fact, because now they are going into partnership as a, and running a business as opposed to working for them. So I think that's the kind of nature. So for me, it was a natural thing. I always had in the back of my mind that I wanted to... I suppose again being an entrepreneur or whatever and, and I just didn't really feel like I had the exposure, the experience, the confidence to be able to go and do that. The whole apprentice experience for me and working for him for two years gave me that and that's why I'm here today. And is he a good person to work for? He is, yeah, definitely. Look, he's, he's, he's different to what you see on the TV. He's not, you know, all shouting and pointing and all that sort of stuff. He's actually very funny, and I think that's coming across now on, on the most recent shows. Um, but he, he tells it how it is. He's straight down the line. That's, that's perfect, isn't it, for a boss? I mean, that's the sort of person that I want to work for. I know where I stand. I know what I've got to do. And if I do something well, um, he might tell me about it. But if I do something wrong, he'll definitely tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Lee, I wonder, you mentioned, you think Jim you know, might be in the final. Is, is he your favourite at the minute? I've got a sneaky position. I think Jim will be in the final, um, certainly in the top four, top five. I always use it as a benchmark. When I was when I was actually on The Apprentice, my, my strategy, if you like, my philosophy was that don't get fired in the first week, work hard, build relationships and see where you go and make sure you lead well. And then if you make it to the top five, that was kind of the benchmark. That was kind of like the marker. So my top five, I think Jim will definitely be in the top five. And at the moment, if you used to push me, I would say that Melody, Zoe and Leon will also be in there. But again, it's still early days. Well, I say that, it's been five weeks on, so it's, I don't know. It's, it's really difficult to call this year, and it's, and it's different because Lord Shook is looking for slightly, someone slightly different. I thought Gavin would have been right up um, Lord Sugar Street, actually, but he got fired week three, so what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> and just finally, Lee, what do you think of Bristol then? Uh, you're spending quite a lot of time here. I have to be honest, I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, you know, I haven't had any ties with Bristol previous to, to the project that we're currently working on, wartownacademy.com forward slash Bristol. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it's a fantastic day. Um, I've just been down near the harbour as well. It's, it's actually really beautiful around Millennium Square and all that sort of stuff as well. So um, it's, a, it's a great and – it's, and it's got a, a kind of – young feel to it can I say that you know it's, it is kind of you know up and coming like it's a university town as well um, beautiful schools and ch uh, church schools and all that sort of stuff as well so yeah I've, I've done a bit of homework around Bristol it's nice yeah I really like it